good morning and welcome to worship. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Today we observe the second Sunday in the season of Advent. We continue by God's grace and word to prepare our hearts and our homes to celebrate the first Advent, the coming of our Lord to be our Savior. We also pray that God would continue to keep us strong in faith and life, that we may be ready to meet our Savior when he comes again in glory to take us and his church home to be with him forever. Our Wednesday evenings in Advent continue with soup and salad supper at 6 o'clock in the garden room. Everyone is invited to join us for that and for Advent worship at 7 o'clock in person in the sanctuary. Those Wednesday evening services are live streamed at 7 o'clock as well. Looking a little farther ahead toward the end of the Advent season, our Christmas Eve service this year will be in person and live streamed at 5 o'clock p.m. on Christmas Eve, a service of candlelight and carols with communion. Our Christmas Day service will be at 10 o'clock a.m. in person and on live. And that Sunday, December 26th, will be our normal 10 o'clock live stream and in-person service with taped services provided at 8.30 and 11.30 as well. All of the other announcements are available. We're glad that you've joined us for worship today. May God bless our hearing and living of his word this holy season. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. 
But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to make ready the way of your only begotten Son, that by his coming we may be enabled to serve you with pure minds. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Malachi, chapter 3. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple, and the messenger of the covenant in whom you delight. Behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming, and who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and like fuller's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi and refine them like gold and silver, and they will bring offerings and righteousness to the Lord. But then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord, as in days of old and as in former years. Then I will draw near to you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against the adulterers, against those who swear falsely, against those who oppress the hired worker in his wages, and the widow and the fatherless. Against those who thrust aside the sojourner and do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts, for I, the Lord, do not change. Therefore, you, O children of Jacob, are not consumed. And from the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to God. be to God. The epistle is from Philippians chapter 1, verses 2 through 11. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy. Because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all, because I hold you in my heart, for you are all partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and the defense and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with affection of Jesus Christ. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea and Herod being the tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of the region of Etruria and Trachonitis, and Lysanias, tetrarch of Albany, during the high priesthood of Annas, Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah in the wilderness. And he went to the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of representance, of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, as it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah the prophet. The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, every mountain and hill shall be made low. The crooked shall become straight, and the rough places shall become level ways, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. He said, therefore, to the crowds that came out to be baptized by him, you brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruits in keeping with repentance. And do not begin to say to yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the ax is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree therefore does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. And the crowds asked him, what shall we do? And he answered them, whoever has, whoever has two tunics is to share with him who has none? And whoever has food is to do likewise. The tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, collect no more than you are authorized to do. The, the soldiers also asked him, and what shall we do? And he said to them, do not extort money from anyone by threats or false accusation and be content with your wages. As the people were in expectation and all were question, questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Christ, John answered them all saying, I baptize you with water, but he who is mightier than I is coming. The strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork in his hand to clear his threshing floor and gather wheat into his barn but the chaff he will burn with an unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to people. But Herod the Tetrarch, who had been re reproved by him for Herodias, brothers, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he locked up John in prison. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us profess our faith together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, 
maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, and I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this morning's Gospel according to Luke, John the Baptist is preparing the way for Jesus Christ by preaching repentance to the people. That repentance, he's asking people to have compassion and, for, and fairness towards all people. If you have two tunics, give one to someone who doesn't. If you have food, share it with those that need it. If you're a tax collector, only take what you're supposed to take. And if you're a soldier, don't suggest bribes and don't falsely accuse people. Isn't this what we should be doing with each other now, every day? Having compassion and sharing with those that need it and treating each other fairly all the time. That's really what the gospel is asking us to do. And that's all with Christ in our heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you show us those that need their tunics those that need food. Show us how to be fair to every individual and to have compassion on each other. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen.
dearly loved and precious children of God, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation on this, the second Sunday in Advent, is the epistle reading appointed for today, and in particular, verse 6 of Philippians chapter 1. Verse 6 reads, I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. This is our text. If there is one thing I have learned over the years, it is that good things take time. Growth is a process. We often learn more from our mistakes and our struggles than our successes. And often we take a few steps forward, and then before we know it, a step or two backward. Forward movement is like that. It is a series of fits and starts, moving forward a little bit, sometimes back a little bit, but always farther forward and wiser and stronger than going backward. But one thing is sure, a little patience along the way goes a long way with ourselves and with others too. When Thomas Edison was only seven years old, a school teacher gave him up as a hopeless case. Imagine being seven years old and already being considered a hopeless case. In the boy's presence, the teacher told an inspector that Edison was muddled and that it was useless for him to attend school any longer. Not a particularly good example of patience there. Here are a few other statements made by teachers about their young students that proved to display more than just a little impatience. About Abraham Lincoln, when you consider that Abe had only four months of school, he is good with his studies, but he is a daydreamer and asks foolish questions. About Woodrow Wilson, Woodrow is a unique member of the class. He is 10 years old and only just beginning to read and write. He shows signs of improving, but you must not set your sights too high for him. About Albert Einstein. Albert is a very poor student. He is mentally slow unsociable, and is always daydreaming. He is spoiling it for the rest of the class. It would be in the best interests of all if he were removed from school at once. About Amelia Earhart, the pioneer aviator. I am very concerned about Amelia. She is bright and full of curiosity but her interest in bugs and other crawling things and her daredevil projects are just not fitting for a young lady. Perhaps we could channel her curiosity into a safe hobby. Caruso's teacher told him he had no voice. An editor told Louisa May Alcott that she would never be able to write anything for popular consumption. That doesn't say much for patience, does it? And yet all those individuals, and surely many more like them, were able to overcome the judgments that others had made of them 
and rise to achieve accomplishments beyond the expectations of everyone else. Many of us have at times had a hard time rising above the labels that others have placed upon us. But I would propose that even more devastating than the labels that others place on us are the labels we place on ourselves. Too many of God's precious children attach labels to themselves which are demeaning and negative and unfit for the people of God. To those who are hard on themselves and impatient with their progress and unforgiving of their fits and starts and mistakes and struggles, hear the word of the Lord. St. Paul wrote, I am sure of this. I am absolutely certain. I am convinced, Paul wrote, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Paul professed an unshakable confidence, not in himself, not in his own abilities, not in those to whom he wrote and our own abilities to get it done, but an unshakable promise, in the, an unshakable confidence in the promise of God's word for his people. What God has started, he will finish. The good work that he has begun in each of us as his people, he will complete. And day by day, step by step, he is working on that completion by his grace, through his spirit, to his glory. And he calls us to trust, and to patience, and to assure and lively confidence in his power and in his promise to do what he has said he will do for us. Certainly nowhere in all of Scripture is this character of God more clear than in terms of our very life with God, our salvation, and our relationship with God. But God started that good work of grace and faith, he sees through to completion. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself through Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection. And God has begun that good work of grace and faith in us, calling us by name, washing us in the waters of baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, announcing that we are his, adopted by grace, placing the name of Jesus Christ upon our heart and lives, forever. He strengthens us in that faith, completing that good work in us through the nurture and nourishment of God's word and sacraments. And he sends his spirit to enable and empower us to live out who we are, to live our identity as the precious, blood-bought, rescued and redeemed children of God that we are. He is even now, this day, this moment, in the process of completing the good work he has begun in us. This is our sure Advent hope. This is our Advent joy. This is God's Advent promise. Through the pen of St. Paul, who was convinced with an unshakable confidence that God who started this good work will indeed see it through to completion. This calls for patience. Please be patient with yourself. 
God is at work. His good work takes time. As we grow in faith through his word and sacraments, as we experience his grace in putting that word into action, as we find joy and satisfaction in the accomplishment of a life lived to God's glory in the service of others, and find that honing and sharpening those tools that he has given to us enables us to more and more fully complete the good work that God has begun in us. Please be patient with yourself. God is at work in and through you to his glory. And this calls for patience with one another. Please be patient with others. God is at work in them too. At times we may see that work going well. Sometimes we catch people when their work in them is not going as well. That series of fits and starts by which we continue to grow and develop to God's glory. Please be patient with others. God is at work with them as well. But I am convinced, as was St. Paul, that he who began a good work in us will continue it, bringing it to ultimate completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Until that day, may God so strengthen your faith and your heart to bring joy as you grow in Christ and serve others in love in his name. Please be patient. God is truly at work in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds through faith in Christ Jesus to life eternal. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. O Lord our God, 
you declared Israel to be your people and brought them out of Egypt. You desired their salvation even when they would not listen to your voice. Since you have called and gathered us also to be your people, open our hearts to listen and gladly submit to your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of the Lord as Isaiah prophesied. And you send us today as ambassadors of Christ to witness to your word. Give us wisdom and courage that we may be faithful to our calling until Christ's coming again in glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you gather your people together in Christ and make us partakers of your grace. Strengthen the faith of those you have gathered into this congregation that our love may abound more and more with all knowledge and discernment. Lead us to approve what is excellent and to be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, John the Baptist counseled penitent soldiers to go about their military duties according to your word. Remember those who serve in the armed forces of our nation. Protect them from harm, give them courage, and grant that they fulfill their duties with honor. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, your forerunner, prepared the way for the one who is mightier than all, your Son, Jesus. For Christ's sake, we entrust to you those in need of healing, comfort, and deliverance, including Margaret Lowry and Tom Poole. Have mercy upon them. Deliver them according to your will and strengthen them in faith that they might be assured of your faithfulness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen.